Good afternoon, Char Watchers. This is Friday, August 9th, 2019. Welcome to Market Watchers Live. Do not attempt to adjust your computer audio. This is not Tom Boley, but this is Dave Keller stepping in for Tom on this Friday. Good to be with all of you. Um, a lot happening in the market today, and, uh, and today we're going to walk through some of the major themes and uh, really focus on the charts, focus on the, the visuals that are going to help you navigate uh, what we're seeing. Uh, this week has been pretty fantastic in terms of, uh, you know, consistent up move that then starts to rotate. We start to see some corrective movements. Um, the S&P 500 down today after, uh, you know, a nice little recovery, but um, we're now starting to roll over. Um, the S&P down 129 uh, here uh, just after noon Eastern time. The tech-heavy Nasdaq down about 163, 1.6%, 1, 1. a little bit further with uh, you know more of a defensive move today. Defensive sectors, utilities probably holding up the best and some of the traditional offense weakening a little more than you'd normally expect. Uh, mid caps, small caps, as we go down the list to micro caps, you can see that sort of the higher beta, more speculative uh, trade uh, you know, rolling over and then the more traditional traditional movements. Commodity is a big story today. And here you can see the Bloomberg Commodity Index, oil, gold, all holding up uh, very well. And, and commodities and oil in particular, some of the biggest moves. Um, airlines, biotech, two, two groups that we'll, we'll think about as the, as the hour goes on. Uh, airlines, one of the weaker groups uh, going through here uh, today. So a lot of movements. And, and uh, at this point, starting to question sort of the overall uh, overall market health. And at this point, Bring in uh, my co-host for today, Mary Ellen McGonigal. Mary Ellen, how are you? Good. How are you doing, Dave? I understand you're up at the uh, the mothership. You're you're in the home office there. So I am recording this live from the home office in Redmond, yeah. Washington. Awesome to be out here. It's a it's a really good group, as uh, as you know from from visiting. But uh, but yeah, a lot of cool things uh, happening. Good. Um, good what's going on with you? Things good. Very good. Just trying to stay in step with this market. Uh, I did put a. a an article out on Monday that talked about a momentum shift to the downside. Uh, got a little bit of a head fake yesterday, but uh, we're, we're seeing a little bit more in the way of deterioration today. So I'm sure we'll review that a bit more as far as the potential landscaping uh, shift in the broader markets. It, it's so true. And it, it, I'm not asked a lot over time in an environment like this, when there's so many macro drivers, so many macro inputs that can cause things to fluctuate so quickly, right? Add so much volatility, like the trade negotiations, the Fed action, the dollar commodities, there's so many things that on any given day can move it. And people have asked me, you know, is that the time to be looking at charts because it's just a macro story? And my answer is usually this is the perfect time to look at charts because this is the way you quantify how people are reacting to some of those, uh, some of those inputs, some of those drivers. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And really, what are the hot buttons? And it's been very, very clear cut that monetary policy is the primary driver. But then those trade talks have had the most impact when you go into the December, into the bear market the May correction, that was all trade war jitter related. So yeah, a lot of cross currents. Well, there's no doubt that there's a lot of, a lot of things to look at in the next hour. What can you tell us about the upcoming schedule for the show? Yeah. So we do have a number of wonderful guests coming up on uh, Wednesday. Dr. Alexander Elder will be here. And then Julius de Kempenar will be here on Thursday. The following week, Danielle Shea from Simpler Options is going to be sharing her work. And then Dan Russo on the 22nd. Oh, forgot about Jesse Felder on the 28th. <laughs> Okay. No problem. What's on the uh, what's on the agenda today here? Yeah. So today we have a, a typically quite busy day. I know you're going to be doing uh, some tech headlines from there. We're going to be doing upgrades and downgrades. I'm going to be sharing with everyone what has been hot and what has not been hot. Again, with an eye toward thematic moves, we want to put you in front of potential shifts there. And of course, we then will do our 10 in 10. So for those of you that have some ticker symbols, names that you'd like us to review, go ahead and put them in there. Uh, and then we do have a poll at the end. So we'll share that with you as we move along. That's great. And I'd, I'd encourage everyone to go in there. I mean, one of the benefits of this show, I would argue, is the interactive nature of it. So if you can uh, you know, look at tickers that you're, that you're thinking about, charts that you want us to review, and, and we, can, uh, we can do it together. That's part of, the, part of the real benefit of this. 
I want to just talk through some of the some of the themes that we're seeing here at uh, Stock Charts HQ, looking at the uh, looking at the markets. You know, this is sort of the the daily chart of the S and P that I would be I would be using, and you know, it's been such a fascinating reversal, right? This uh, you know, everyone's a genius bull market, higher highs, higher lows, long and strong up and to the right. Everything made so much sense back here in late July, didn't it? And then we start to rotate lower. And when we start to break down through some of those you know, previous swing lows, that's when you really have to start to question your positioning, question your thinking, and, and are you on the right side of things? And there's no doubt the last you know, uh, two weeks have seen plenty of distribution. And in the S&P 500, you know, a couple of key levels that I think were, were violated, but one that was really important, in my opinion, was this, uh, this move from the low at the beginning of June up to the high at the end of July. You can see we pulled back just about 61.8%, I mean, to the tick, if you look at the close on, uh, on Monday. And then from there, we had two you know, pretty good days. And, and in the short term, when we're closing toward the highs of the trading day, two days in a row after a big sell-off, should give you some confidence that we're starting to see some momentum in the short term that people are starting to accumulate. And that we saw the follow through here uh, yesterday on Thursday, right back up to the 50-day moving average. And I think that's why today could be a really crucial day when you think about the next a couple of days, next couple of weeks, because now we've pulled back up to this smoothing mechanism, the 50 day moving average. We're now seeing more distribution. You know, depending on how we close, there's a lot of game left here in the in on the day on on Friday. But uh, you know, at this point, it's uh, what you call a bearish inside day, which is a long up day followed by a a long down day, and the range uh, filling in there it tends to be negative in the short term. So you know, would suggest sort of going into next week, you might have some uh, some potential weakness. Here, I'm just looking at a short-term uh, you know, snapshot of those last five days, just looking at the trading week leading up to where we're at now. And you can see those first three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, clear accumulation during the trading day. You can see the follow-through as we broke to new highs uh, yesterday. But then look how we've just you know, opened and then fell down. And when you open at the highs of the day and keep drifting lower, that is not short-term strength. It's more short-term weakness. Um, what I'm going to do here is just walk through a couple of the candle glance pages that I tend to tend to look at, and then I'll, I'll finish with some ratios that I think are, are pretty key here. For me, one of the big themes that I've been looking at um, that I encourage all of you to think about is just the relative movement of large caps, the, the large cap names, S&P versus uh, lower in the cap tier. So mid caps, small caps, and here micro caps. So if you look, the S&P 500, a series of higher highs here at the end of April, another higher high here at the end of July. The mid cap index, though, look how it never made a higher high, right? On a closing basis, it just hit that same resistance level and then came back down. Now look a little bit further deeper below the hood. You've got uh, the small cap ETF here, the IJR, and then the IWC is the uh, micro cap ETF. Those actually all made a lower high. So this divergence of large caps going higher, mid caps never getting to a new high, and then this rotation of small and mid caps. Again, that's not the sort of environment, in my opinion, that gives you a lot of further upside. It's a little more on the defensive side. And again, it's all about the S&P and the price movements, the price levels that it's able to, uh, to do. Here, we're looking really quickly at just the global markets. And I think one of the key divergences that we're seeing is uh, the US and developed markets. This is IFA here in the upper left going to higher highs. We see a divergence from emerging markets. And that's obviously a very commodity-oriented space. Um, we'll rotate here to just talk briefly about commodities. This is the Bloomberg Commodity Index uh, here at top middle. And you can see just this reversal. You know, again, a lot of times, uh, you know, Peter Lynch, who's a, a, a legendary fidelity portfolio manager that I enjoy working with, getting a chance to pick some, the brain of someone like, like him was fantastic. And he always said, I like investment ideas that you can illustrate with a crayon. So if you look at the commodity index, this is the CRB, the Bloomberg Commodity Index, um, you know, two different ways of just looking at the commodity space. Look at this double bottoming pattern where we've bottomed uh, right around the lows from the end of December, beginning of January. And I think you know, the market has memory and the fact that we've come back to those same low levels and found some support, in my opinion, you know, pretty interesting. Uh, and, and commodities, if those emerge as a new theme, where well, that could be a very different environment than we've seen in the last, you know, month or two with, with weaker commodities and how that lines up with, uh, with the rest of the space. Finally, we're seeing fixed income pull back from, you know, extreme highs. And, and again, with the, with the Fed decision earlier this week, certainly caused some extremes in that market. Uh, one chart, I, I don't have time to show you, but I would encourage you to look at the ratio of stocks versus bonds. Actually, we do have time to show you. Why don't we? Here we go. Stocks versus bonds. This is the uh, spiders, the SPY versus the TLT. When this goes up, it's favoring stocks over bonds. When it goes down, favoring bonds over stocks. We can see how that rotated lower as bonds sort of went vertical this week with the, uh, with the Fed decision lowering rates. 
If this starts to reverse a little bit, just starting to turn, we'll see if that uh, sort of follows through. But I think that's a really important tell on where you might want to be positioned uh, big picture. So, you know, we'll see. There's, there's so many themes. There's so many things to dig into. So, um, again, a really good time to go through the charts and, and start, to, start to do some deep thinking. At this point, let's rotate to some of the, the stocks. You know, it's been uh, earnings and, and plenty of movements with, uh, with upgrades and downgrades. Mary, what, Mary Ellen, what can you tell us about uh, where we're at there? Yeah, we can take a look. There have been surprisingly a very large number of upgrades today. I've cherry-picked some of the more interesting ones. All of them are going to be earnings related. This first one is Kronos, C-R-O-N. We're looking at a daily price chart. This company is the third largest cannabis company in Canada, and everyone has been just waiting for these stocks to come out of the gate and show some promise. They did come out with earnings. They were pretty good, but valuation is still skyrocketing relative to those numbers. And we can see the stock is languishing now below these key simple moving averages. Your RSI never got positive. It's trending downward. And then your MACD is in negative territory, despite today's upgrade. Let's take a look at another stock that did get upgraded. This is a defense-related MRCY is the ticker symbol. Take a look at this gap up last week. This is a stock that was on the MEM edge list that uh, prior to their reporting of earnings, we can see it gapped up quite nicely, pulled back to this upward trending 10-day simple moving average, and is now breaking out of this one-week base in a bullish move. I'm going to review some of these other defense stocks because they are really performing quite well in this difficult period. RSI, Max D, both positive. One other name that we can take a look at that was upgraded, and this actually was not earnings related, it was valuation related. Morgan Stanley upgraded Foot Locker. This gap down back here in the beginning at the end of May, all about very dismal earnings. They have not been able to get off the mat. The stock is still very much in a downtrend. This today's upgrade is not doing a whole lot to help. We can see that this. RSI is not quite positive. MACD trending upward, but still not positive. I would not be a buyer of this stock. Let's take a look at some of the downgrades today. This first one is going to be earnings related. FTCH is the ticker, Farfetch. These guys came out with really good numbers last quarter, very promising. Since then has been in a downtrend. It gapped down 40% today. Very, very disappointing earnings. Outlook is downgraded. The stock <clears throat> is really in trouble there. We can look at one other downgrade here, and that is a Trade Desk. These guys did come out with numbers. They are downgraded, but the stock is still rallying despite that. And we can see it's poised to break out of this nice two-week base. And I do have time for one more here on the downgrade side. And I do want to point this out because a number of other stocks in this space, this is TD Ameritrade. The stock did get downgraded. They're down another 3%. Uh, E-Trade got downgraded today as well. These guys are really struggling. Uh, it seems that their numbers are down as far as active investors. We can see this RSI is trending downward, negative territory, MACD as well. And I will leave it at that. We will be right back after this commercial with what's hot and what's not. The Chart Watchers newsletter features expert technical commentary about the current market from some of the industry's leading technical analysts. See what's really happening in the markets through their eyes and gain an edge in your own investing. The newsletter is packed full of insightful and educational articles intended to help you become a better investor. Whether you are brand new to charting or a seasoned technical analyst, each edition will provide a wealth of informative content. It's the best way to stay informed on all the latest news, events, updates, and additions here at StockCharts.com. Whether it's a new feature or blog, an upcoming conference, or a special sale, you'll hear it first in the Chart Watchers newsletter. And welcome back. We are going to go ahead with upgrades and downgrades. And this first area that we are going to be looking at is gold stocks. Let me go ahead and begin. I'm going to share with you GLD, and that is the gold ETF. And you'll really get a quick sense of 
just how strong this area has been this week. Take a look at that. I'll pull up a weekly chart. Gold really has been a bit of a safe haven type of a play, and we can see that it is gapping up here. It's up over 4%. This is in addition to these prior moves. We're looking at a weekly chart now, and we did have big moves back here in June. Gold ETF really kind of based marked time for about a month, but this week is taking off again. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the individual stocks among this very strong, healthy gold area. And the first one is Anico, Anico Eagle. AEM is the ticker symbol. I'm going to pull up a daily price chart here. And what you want to pay attention to is the fact the stock has had a big move, but it is extended. You do want to see this stock more closely align with this shorter term upward trending 10 day simple moving average similar to this uptrending period here in July. You can see that when this and most stocks when they get extended above this 10 day, oftentimes they will pull back and mark time. So right now we are a bit extended. This RSI is in this overbought position, but we are still very much in an uptrend. We can take a look at a couple of other gold stocks that are gonna be very similarly positioned. This is Albemarle, ALB. Now this stock, while it has had a, a significant week and we can see, let's go ahead to the weekly on this because it's not, uh, it's not up quite as much, but even on this daily, this is not a stock that I would even entertain looking at because we can see this longer term 200 day simple moving average very much in a downtrend. And likewise with your other simple moving averages, the stock really is trapped here. Let's go ahead and move on and take a look at a healthier looking stock in this gold area. And this is AU, one of the larger names. We can see with today's move, the stock has hit a new high, but in line with what I was mentioning with AEM, it is pulling back to that 10 day moving average, which is what you want to see this uptrend still very firmly in place. Uh, moving along to another area, I'm gonna take us over to software stocks. I like to look at the ETFs initially to give a sense, and this is IGV. And we can see that overall, the group is still suffering. It's down about 1% for the week. Software stocks do tend to get hit when the markets have the trade war jitters. We've seen that again and again. So overall, the group is positioned uh, a little bit negatively, but I do want to share with you some stocks within software. It's a quite a large group that have been able to buck the otherwise difficult uh, period. This is Shopify, S-H-O-P. Stock came out with numbers uh, at the beginning of this month very, very strong, earning 600% year over year, 400% ahead of estimates. And then we can see the stock is continuing to advance beyond last week's very strong report as analysts are raising estimates. RSI trending upward above that 50. MACD had that nice positive crossover, black line up above the red, also in positive territory. So Shopify is breaking out of a six-week base, and it's doing so in decent volume. So uh, despite the uh, rest of the stocks in that area potentially suffering, here's another one, Q2. This is a daily view, and this company did come out with earnings. These guys provide software to the banking community. They record it uh, their earnings after Wednesday's close. They beat on earnings and revenue. Big gap up, big volume. When you see that, institutions want in. And the good news is that the stock really is not giving up much from yesterday's big gap up. So we can see that this RS, I'm sorry, MACD has this nice positive crossover and is trending upward as is the RSI. Q2 hitting new highs, so looking quite positive. ANSS, another software stock, earnings beat, they raised guidance. This is a company that was really deteriorating with the software group. I showed you that ETF, so going into earnings, the valuation was certainly not what it was up here. Analysts like it, they're upgrading but I will say this is not a particularly healthy looking pattern. It looks as if it will have a bit more work to do because this volatility in here is pointing to a confused market relative to this particular stock. We can see that the MACD is just poised to turn positive, not quite there yet. And then RSI bouncing around that net neutral. Let's move on to another area that was hot this week. 
And again, I am going to begin with the ETF because I want to see how is the broader market or certainly the broader group performing? Would it support a continued move into this area that is hot this week? And so what we're looking at here is semiconductors, of course, totally hit with the trade war fears. Many of these semiconductors derive revenues from China. So they got hit quite hard and they are struggling to retain a presence above this up for trending 50 day simple moving average. So we're still bouncing around, not quite negative overall, but certainly there were some bright spots. And AMD, bellwether name here, take a look at this. The stock gapped up 16%. Yesterday, they came out with huge news. They launched the industry's first uh, seven nanometer chip. So that is a real front runner event. They took Intel out of the game with that move. So we can see this gap up. So this gap up constructively put the stock above both that 10 and 50 day simple moving average, huge volume. But it, I would argue that the overall market pressures among semiconductors are could very well hold the stock back. It's poised to break out of this longer term base. Another semiconductor stock that is having a good week is KL. AC. Let's see if we can pull that one up here. And uh, this is another one that is has been upgraded following their earnings. It is up quite a bit for the week, but we can see again, it's, it's struggling. And it could be with in line again with the difficulties that this anticipated trade war fears could bring with it. So with this, we can see that the stock, if it's able to get up above this 10 day simple moving average and advance above that 140, that certainly would be constructive. The RSI is up here above this net neutral zero, but it is waffling a bit in line with the stock's price. And your MACD is above this net neutral zero in positive territory, but it did have that negative black line down through the red. So a little bit of a cautionary look there. So we certainly want to move on to other areas that have been hot this week, and that is defensive REIT stocks. So certainly we can pull up the real estate uh, sector, if I can get the ticker symbol going here. And that is XLRE is the S&P 500 real estate sector. It does have real estate development services, but a lot of this is going to be REITs. Take a look at the move into these stocks. We have a couple of actions going on that are benefiting. Uh, the group is up 1%. I'm going to share with you some of the better performing stocks among there. These REIT stocks are defensive. A lot of them have nice high yields. There's another dynamic at play here. That is the super low interest rate environment that allows these real estate investment trust companies to uh, borrow money at low rates to fund potential acquisitions, uh, properties that they can then rent out. So I'm going to share with you some of the better performing names within the REITs. Each of these stocks are were are on my MEM investment research list. So those subscribers that uh, subscribe to my research were put into this stock back in here and it's gapping up almost 4% to this week. So it's a very, very positive, strong stock. We can see it's continuing to find support. That's an intraday view that can be helpful. It has its purposes, but I wanna point you to a weekly chart. We can see that it is breaking out of this nice one month base and it's doing so on volume. And the next one that we're looking at is another one that was tagged on my MEM investment research. We can see it, it too is breaking out of this nice long six week base. Take a look at this volume and the uptrend is very firmly in place. It is a little bit extended. I would not chase this or any stock really, but each of these, this is another one from my uh, research list, Crown Castle. We can see that it broke out this week of this nice six week base, nice volume. RSI is trending upward as is the MACD. Another one that is extended, certainly following the very strong move that it's had this week. Another name that we can look at in this REIT space is WPC. This is a name that I did have on my list, but it fell out 
of favor. We can take a quick look and you'll see what I'm referencing here. Uh, it did fall out back actually here in this late June period, but it has regained. It's now up above all of its simple moving averages breaking out to new highs, RSI, MACD are positive. So those are some of the highlights among those REIT stocks. I'm gonna move on because there's two, actually three other hot areas, and I'm not gonna really dig in too much that are of note that are doing well. And the first area is internet related stocks. This is gonna be all about earnings. Roku, they came out with super strong numbers. Take a look at that gap up. Management announced that one in five households how now has Roku, and it's all about the advertising possibilities. So we see this stock gap up. We see the big volume that's telling us institutions want in. Today, it's up another 4% following that gap up. RSI, MACD are both very constructive. At some point, I would look for the stock to consolidate following this big move in an effort to digest it, but clearly the uptrend is in place here. Match.com, another earnings related big gap up. Company is citing advances subscribership to Tinder, big overseas uh, pickup in subscribership there, gap up. Now this is more in line with what you would see following a gap up in earnings. Oftentimes the stock will pull back or as I suggested, mark time before potentially exhibiting or experiencing another leg up. So that strength in Roku is telling you that really investors perhaps were surprised by that gap up and they want in. So that's internet, aerospace and defense related stocks. This is another area that has been really quite strong. Analysts and myself included are thinking that these aerospace and defense related stocks can be put in there with other defensive areas. So we talk about utility stocks, we looked at REITs, those are very standardized, clear cut defense defensive stocks, but these defense stocks really can be put into that category in the sense that despite any economic strife, there is still going to be continued demand for their products. Trump is signing in for next year a new high in military spending. This is HEI, Heiko, another one from my research list that was put on back here, continuing to be in an uptrend, breaking out to a new high. And we can see this MACD just poised to have this positive black line up through the red crossover. Your RSI is positive. We can take a look at some other stocks that are up this week, despite a difficult market. This is L3 Harris. And the stock broke out of a one month base last week and then pulled back to this upward trending 10 day simple moving average and is now hitting a new high in price. Take a look at this volume, RSI, MACD, both in positive territory so we can see the real outperformance and strength. AJRD is another, this is a little bit of a smaller name. Take a look at this gap up on earnings, pulled back ever so slightly. Another leg up as analysts are continuing to revise estimates higher. When you see this type of action where it gaps up on earnings and breaks out of a base and it does so on volume, I would argue that that is your most bullish, not only pattern, but circumstance, because it is gapping up on that earnings. The stock is continuing to advance higher, very much in an uptrend. One last name that we can take a look at here on the uh, aerospace defense space, a little bit of a thinner stock. When you see the stock's price kind of bounce around here with not a lot in the way of continuity, but it's Elbit, ESLT. We're looking at a daily price chart. Again, another one that's gapping out and breaking out two new highs. RTN is another one, not quite as healthy looking. And the, the reason I'm citing that is because Raytheon really has not participated in the group move. When you're looking for stocks that you want to participate in a group move, 
go for those stocks, I'm going to pull up one uh, again from MEM Investment Research, Lockheed Martin. Gapped up here, strong earnings, very, very confirmed uptrend is what you're looking at. And these are the candidates you want to be in those stronger stocks among or within that strong group. These are your leadership names. Lockheed pulled back very orderly to its 50-day double bottom and hitting a new high. Uh, one other area that is doing really quite well this week is the home builders. And a lot of that is going to be interest rate related. As we see rates at a low, it is uh, home buying is still within the grasp of many people. So this first name is LGIH, LGI Homes. The stock is poised to break out of this five week base. And the stock, this is a bit more of a regional name, but it's indicative of what we are seeing. Let's go ahead and move to Lenar. This is going to be a more of a bellwether type of a stock as well as far as the name recognition. Lenar, we can see it was in this downtrend. But more recently, the stock is poised to reverse that downtrend as it breaks above First, that green 10-day, then that 50-day, simple moving average. Uh, this is very much news-related. It's not earnings. The, the companies, these home builders, are announcing uh, expansion and growth among sales. So PM, uh, PHM is Pulte Group. This is another one that is reversing this downtrend. We're not quite there yet. Your RSI is waffling around that net neutral 50. MACD is still negative and it's, I'd like to see it have a position up above that 50 day simple moving average before turning constructive. But I will say, I do not have time to get into it, but home builders are doing well. There are a number of construction related stocks that are also doing quite well. The, the, I would call that the add-on move. This is just one example. Builders First, BLDR, company came out with strong numbers. This is a group among stockcharts.com where you can go ahead into those building materials and you will see stocks that are in an uptrend. Again, an add-on to the move in to builders and even uh, really going out here, but Home Depot doesn't look too constructive here, but you, you oftentimes will see an add-on move when a particular area is doing well. So not all is well everywhere. Let's go and move on and take a look at what has not been so hot this week. And I'm going to take you first to this ETF. This is the S&P Regional Banking ETF, KRE. We can see this deterioration. It started last week. This big move down, this is the Fed lowering interest rates and uh, certainly I'm sure you're aware that interest rates, as they decline, this is not a good atmosphere for a number of these banking stocks. Bank stocks do, uh, a lot of their profit margins are going to be, uh, we also had a flat and very briefly inverted yield curve. They're going to benefit from a wide uh, yield curve that has a differential that they can benefit from. So here's a look at Bank of America. Again, this gap down here in line with that Fed action last week, stock gaps down further as interest rates are continuing. They're picking up a little bit over the last two days, but still the overall atmosphere is quite negative. And so we can see Bank of America just barely broke out of that nice space following good earnings, but this interest rate environment is just not healthy. RSI is trending downward. Mac D also in downward territory. We can take a look at certainly another, a number of other stocks, but you'll see a very similar scenario with the breakdown. Even though that Fed rate cut was anticipated, it really did negatively impact these banks that were ever so hopefully finally potentially reversing their downtrends, but unfortunately they are getting hit again. So really you could just drill down, take a look at any number of names and you will see this very similar negative scenario. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to some other areas that are not faring so well this week. And again, all, a lot of this is with an eye toward looking for themes that could play out because oftentimes when I talk to you about what's hot, the following week, you will see that same set of names, that same area. So uh, that is 
the purpose of why we're going through all of this. But uh, this next area, I would call it former tech titans. And these are going to be names that were very big, certainly uh, last century. You'll recognize them as I pull them up, Xerox. And we can see Xerox was beginning to potentially, it did actually hit a new high after breaking out of a base here. They are venturing into other areas. I know there's cryptocurrency involved in there somewhere, but more recently the stock is taking a hit and we can see that it is in a downtrend and uh, the stock does not look particularly healthy. This is all about earnings. They reported their earnings last week, have decidedly drifted lower ever since. So once the stock breaks this 50-day simple moving average on volume, that is a golden rule for me. It is statistically in your favor to exit that stock unless you are a super long-term investor who has insights about a given company. Otherwise, for the most part, you'll be well served when you see that break on that type of huge volume. Subsequent to that, we get this 10-day simple moving average crossing down below the red. That is that death cross that I wrote about in the broader markets. It's only happened in the broader markets twice over the last 10 months in December, bear market, and May were the two times we had the death cross in the S&P 500, not to uh, Ray, the picture here, but we can see that with Xerox in particular, the RSI is in oversold territory. So you would anticipate a bounce, but once we break that 200 day, your MACD in negative territory, not so positive. Another big name from last century is IBM. And we can see that IBM actually came out here with a uh, this is another earnings related drop down here. The RSI is negative. MACD has that negative crossover black line through the red poised to turn negative. So IBM uh, really is not looking good at all. Another stock that broke its 50 day simple moving average today. We'll have to see how it closes on that volume, but definitely not constructive looking. So. Let's move on. Another big stock. This is Intel. And of course, they're a big titan among Wall Street. But I talked to you earlier about AMD knocking uh, Intel out of the mix as far as with the introduction of their new seven nanometer chip. Intel, you can see this big drop. They really have not been faring that well, despite this recent rally in semis. This Intel is uh, broken now down below this 50 day simple moving average. So we have time to take a look. I'm gonna move on to the media space so that I can show you. Interestingly, most of the FANG stocks are faring pretty well going into this week's tough period, but there is one name that did not fare well last week and uh, continues to look weak and that's Netflix. So this is really going to underscore what I mentioned to you earlier. When you see a stock and this is on earnings, the stock breaks below that 50 and then that 200 day simple moving average, huge volume. This is institutions. They want out. We get a little bit of a rally attempt, fa fails. It finds resistance at this 200 day simple moving average and breaks down again. So this is a classic uh, underscore of that break below that 50 day simple moving average. There are a couple of other stocks that are media related. We're seeing a real shift. This is an area where I talked about Roku, mobile streaming, uh, Disney and so forth. But these old line media companies, not so much Netflix, that is certainly newer as far as their approach, but but there is a bit of a shift. So this is CBS. We can see CBS uh, general malaise, general downtrend, now broke below all of these simple moving averages. And I do have time for one more stock in this media related area. And this is Avid. Take a look. The stock gap down tremendously. And this particular uh, move down here was following earnings. We can see this gap down breaks both the 50 and that 200 day simple moving average, huge volume. We are getting a bit of a, uh, I would call this a hemorrhage. Oftentimes what happens is you'll get what I call a wedge where it'll wedge upward. 80% of the time you will get another leg down. So would not be a buyer on this dip. I will leave it at that. Next, we will be up with 
uh, the 10 in 10. Awesome. I tell you what, Mary Ellen, one of my favorite parts of hosting the show so far is listening to you talk through all those names. That was fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> this is really fun. Um, we'll, we'll do this again sometime. That's uh, that's great. And and listen, I hope everyone is paying attention to how you think through and how you talk through the charts because I know your. I mean, I love your process and the way that you go through it meticulously. Boy, that's the that's the type of routine. I hope um, all the listeners are able to start using in their own in their own process. That that's fantastic. Nicely done. Oh, thanks, thanks, Dave. Um, yeah. So let's move into the uh, the ten on ten and and thanks again, everyone, for um, putting in tickers that you want to look at. Uh, as again, as I mentioned earlier, you know, one of the best parts I think of this show when I've watched it is just the fact that you get to get someone like Mary Ellen and, and, uh, and Tom and Aaron and others, you know, really starting to look through some of the names that you're looking at. And I think as a technical analyst, I've learned the most from learning from people that have done this way more than I have. So hopefully you find this to be, uh, to be value added for, uh, for all of you. Let's go through the 10 tickers. Thanks again, everyone, for putting them in here. We're going to start with uh, ADPT, which is Adaptive Biotechnologies. This is a, an IPO name, and, and I'm going to go through these, but Mary Ellen, obviously jump in anytime you, anytime you like. You bet. Um, you know, when I'm looking at a chart like this, I, you know, I was, I was talking to the producers before the show about IPO names and, and when is appropriate to look at IPO names on a chart. And I would, you know, I would argue it's always a good idea to look at the chart because that's what represents visually what investors are thinking. That's how they're voting with their feet. It shows on the chart. But I always want to be careful with an IPO. You need to have enough history, enough price history that the chart has meaning, right? On day one, the chart really doesn't have a ton of data and, and technical analysis is all about the market have a, having a memory, how people are reacting to certain price levels and certain movements. So you need enough history to do it. I would argue ADPT is at that point where you can really start to make some pretty good analysis with that. Here's a stock that came out of the IPO, rallied very quickly and then came back down to earth. Now traded below the IPO price uh, about a week ago and then uh, you know during this week has now rotated back higher. For me, I think one of the key things is the fact that we've rotated above this resistance level, and you also have what we call a confluence of resistance, right? You have this price resistance from previous peaks, and then it's also a Fibonacci level. If you take the high from right out of the IPO, and then the low that we hit about a week ago, we're just above that level. So in, in my opinion, it's a really interesting rotation from the IPO price, the, the sell-off, and now rotating back to new highs. People are willing to pay more than they have before. It looks like a pretty interesting uh, entry point here. And on a relative basis, again, pretty crazy because it's coming right out of the, the offering. But you can see how the relative strength starting to rotate higher. We like that. Not yet overextended by the RSI. So it looks like a pretty compelling, pretty compelling place to be. And I'd be looking at some of these next Fibonacci levels for resistance. So sort of 44.50 would be a, an interesting upside objective uh, with that one. It's up over 4% uh, just today. Yeah. And they are due for their, uh, they're going to be reporting their earnings, I believe, next Tuesday. For those of you that are Got following it. this. Yeah. Next one is, uh, I didn't get to it, but it was upgraded today, Dollar General, DG. Excellent. So this is one that, you know, I, I tell you, with a lot of a lot of equity charts, that, you know, one of the, the key things I've looked at, and, and, and again, a lot of broad market indexes had this pattern as well. You had higher highs in June and July, but then you look at the momentum, uh, you know, RSI is sort of going to lower highs. And on a stock like DG, this is something that is sort of concerning that, and again, I've never found that to be like a tactical exit point that doesn't tell you to trade. That's what puts it on the radar. And then you look for movements, you look for signals that would try to validate it. So with, with Dollar General, it's, it's had sort of a, a false breakdown. We broke below the 50 day, broke below the support, rallied back, but then today you have what's called an outside day, right? Higher high, lower low. And again, assuming we close around these levels, which is a huge assumption, but if we would, you know, it's going to be sort of a negative day. So suggest some weakness in the uh, in the short term, uh, and and sort of stabilize on a relative basis. It's sort of a market performer for the last uh, for the last two months. At this point, it, you know, in my opinion, you, you look for a little bit of a pullback, and this support level back here around 131, 132, that's where it found support previously. That's an interesting point to look at. Okay, next one is a cannabis stock, T L R Y. Cannabis stocks, right? Yes, um, Tilray. Everyone wants to look at these. You know, so it, it's interesting. I mean, you look at, uh, you know, again, the market has memory. And if you look at this, you look at this chart, you can see the big run up about a year ago. And we're just looking at the last one year for a consistency. And then just this consistent pattern. And, and again, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier the Peter Lynch quote always look for ideas you can illustrate with a crayon. And for me, a pattern of lower lows and lower highs is the type of name I don't want to be messing around with because there's a reason why the price is going lower. I might not know it, and I don't need to as a technical analyst, but I better respect the fact that that's happening. 
But if you look at what's happened recently, that's starting to change just a little bit, right? So now we've established a higher low for the first time, I would argue, since you know, really back here in, in, in October of last year, right? Since then, you've had this pattern, lower lows, lower highs. We've now established a higher low, now testing uh, the 50-day moving average. We, we broke above it, have sort of drifted down, and now you know, potentially breaking back higher. I put some Fibonacci retracements, which are really compressed here. Sorry for that. But you know, I guess it shows you how the volatility has come in relative to that initial move a year ago. But at this point, I, you know, at the, in the short term, that 38.2% level, around 44.50, 44.60, I, boy, that's a real interesting short-term level. And if we break above that, in my opinion, that's the kind of thing that confirms a higher low. We then start to go into a, to a higher high. That might be an initial you know, point to take interest. And in. then uh, you know, obviously, a break above 50, break above that previous high would really suggest a rotation from, from bearish to bullish. But I, I would argue it's, uh, it's not there yet. Okay, very good. Next one, uh, Bellwether Biotech, Celgene, CELG. CELG biotech names are have been have been interesting. Um, you know, th- this is one that actually has held up pretty well, and and I like charts where if you don't know that the market has corrected, the chart doesn't look like necessarily the market's been that weak. It actually looks pretty good. You've had this short term rotation from, you know, a downtrend to an uptrend. You have some pretty clear uh, support levels going back. I mean, for me, it's always about starting where we're at, looking left on the chart. The market has memory, so you've got clear support around 89, clear resistance around 99. And at this point, we've reclaimed the 50-day moving average. Pretty pretty impressive. And I like especially the relative movement. Making a new relative high for the last, uh, for the last month is, uh, is pretty interesting. RSI not yet overbought, which means they're you know, potentially full, further upside here. It's an interesting name here. Yeah, very interesting. I agree. Uh, the next one is SYMC, semantic on the heels of uh, the Broadcom yeah, you know, so this, yeah, this is an interesting one. This reminds me of uh, Microsoft. I, you know, a, a colleague of mine, former colleague of mine, always used to say Microsoft just doesn't chart well. <laughs> there are stocks that make sense visually. There are stocks that just don't make sense. And you know, what again, I, I would argue you always want to look at the charts because I think they'll have value. But you know, this is one that you just look at the gaps. You look at the jumps around. There's a lot happening here. You've got you know, sort of the island reversal, sort of the, you know, the, the, the price action disconnected from everything else. This is a really fascinating name. What's great about this, uh, a range bound name like this, is, though, is there are plenty of levels to pay attention to. So as you look, you know, start where we're at, you always look left on the chart. And I'm always looking to see where the market has found support and resistance previously, because that tells you where, you know, again, institutions and others that are looking for, for points to add or subtract uh, some positions, this is where they're going to be, they're going to be looking it's kind of what I expected, right? We're, we're just testing that 38.2% level or 61.8% retracement back up here. So we sold off. We kind of found support right at 20, have now gapped back up. We're back above the, the moving averages. And we're right at this, what I'd call a, a supply zone or level at which you know sellers have kind of come in or buyers have exhausted. So I think there's a lot of challenge for it to overcome these levels. And until, until it would break above sort of the bottom edge of that gap, I think you have to wait and see if there's enough upside momentum to take it up. But boy, what a what a what a choppy chart, right? Yeah, Whew. that's not pretty. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, I think you'll Let's find go this to an next... easy one next. Okay. Maria? Yeah, I think you'll like this one. We, <laughs> okay, we covered this last week as well. Uh, Weight Watchers WW. They did report earnings last week, and they are uh, got upgraded. This yeah. Week. So the, you know, again, I don't want to say that this is a perfect chart and don't mm-hmm. take this as a, as a screaming buy recommendation, but boy, it, it's, it's a compelling chart. Right. And, and mm-hmm. again, what I mentioned earlier, I like when there's a rotation, there's a clear rotation from distribution to consolidation, the sideways pattern here for the last couple of months. And then you have a rotation to more of accumulation where higher highs, higher lows, breaking above resistance, you know, finding support at the 50, that's all pretty positive. And now we've reclaimed the 200 day for the first time since you know, last fall, that's a big reversal for this kind of stock. And, and in consumer discretionary, which arguably is, you know, is, has not been as attractive in certain parts of that, certain parts of that sector. So a, a stock like this, it's doing pretty well. Relative strength starting to break out. This is a new, you know, 13 week high in relative strength on uh, the last couple of days. Really compelling chart. I, I, I think it would be worth, you know, considering this one. It's an interesting one for the long side. Very good. And then uh, UNH is the next one. They're, they're trying to turn, I'd say. Yeah, right. I'm trying. This is one that's trying. And, and uh, you know, I would argue that, you know, what we used to call the fat pitch chart is something, you know, that you, if you're a baseball fan, something you need to take a swing at. Here's something that, you know, a good long-term trend, if you're just thinking of the last couple months, pretty strong uptrend, higher highs, higher lows, and it's pulled back to an interesting support level. So the question now is, you know, have we, have we found support? Have we established this level 
and and we're now and now we're now breaking higher or is this the continuation of this lower highs and lower lows so for me the fact that we've kept making lower lows is concerning and i'd want to see some sort of higher low before i got really interested in this but before that you've got to reclaim these moving averages we're right below the 50 day and the 200 day the confluence of these smoothing uh, mechanism. So boy, until we would break above that, I, I think you have to hold off just a, just a touch. But the fact that the last four trading days we've closed above the open, I think is compelling just in the short term, just in the, in the short term environment. Mm -hmm. uh, this next one is Blackstone Group. Ticker symbol is BX. Nice 4.3% yielder. Wow. So I tell you what, I mean, and, and this reminds me of something like AT&T, right? Uh, stocks with a healthy dividend yield at a time when you know yield is hard to come by could be really, really compelling here. And again, what I mentioned earlier, you like charts that you wouldn't know the market has pulled back from the price chart. This looks pretty decent. I mean, in any environment, I would argue this is the type of chart that makes a lot of sense. Good uptrend. It's pulled back to the 50-day, now trading higher. Um, you know, boy, I mean, pretty key resistance there around 49.50. But overall, really constructive and the relative strength i would say tells the story for the last six months long and strong you know stocks that are doing well that are performing across the environments are worth taking a look at very good and then a uh, software name service now now got hit. all right this next one here so this is a, this is a tough one and i would say you know for me i don't like the fact when I, you know the stock held the 50 day a number of times broke below its most previous swing low has broken below the uh, the 50 day and now you know rallying a little bit but boy I mean probably going to make a lower high here and, and you've got sort of this area of, of resistance I would think of it sort of in this area up to the 50 day where you know unless we would sort of eclipse that and you see some sort of accumulation coming off the oversold read boy I, this is the type of thing underperforming that I would probably hold off on and just see and just see uh, and see how things play out here but but yeah. a little more cautious compared to some of these other charts we've looked at and i will say that break last week was on huge volume this stock was on my list since february and yeah. it saddened me to remove it last week <laughs> <laughs> oh so sad oh. Something there though right if it's enough to, to remove it i think that's worth paying attention yeah. to for sure yeah uh beyond meat is the last one b-y-n-d b-y-n-d all right, so one more. Yeah, this is another one with a little less history, but boy, I tell you, in in the life of the stock so far, fairly encouraging. And again, you're you know, again, I would always caution you: the more history a chart has, the more memory and the more value I think charts would add. But especially coming out of an IPO, especially seeing an initial move, it really hasn't had a correction yet; hasn't had much of a sell-off. We are at the incredibly key moment here of the first time it's testing its 50-day moving average. If this holds, I think it could be really compelling, and you've got clear support below there around 150. So overall, fairly, fairly positive. And it's pulled back to the point where you might expect um, some sort of uh, some sort of accumulation. But boy, if it fails there, I think you have to I think you have to hold off a bit. This is a really interesting uh, name right at this point with that with that sort of support level. Yeah, and we're seeing a lot of other movement in if you look at consumer staples, those stocks that are really doing well are also in that alternative meat space. So that's yeah. another area where there's a lot of game-changing activity going on. You know, it, it's a fantastic point. And I would also say that, uh, you know, I didn't show it earlier in the, uh, in the discussion, but one of the key ratios I, I would look at is consumer discretionary versus consumer staples. And just looking at offense versus defense within the consumer space. And a lot of times it can be sort of a, you know, an interesting tell on where institutions are rotating, where the bets are being placed. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, that's the type of thing. If that if that is going higher, can be pretty constructive for the market. It's come down in the last couple of weeks as the market's corrected. Staples stock. I mean, some of the some of the names within Staples have looked pretty, pretty interesting and at levels where they might be worth taking a shot at. So, yeah, that Tyson Foods, it's up 11 uh, percent yeah. this week. They're, they're going with the plant based product. Right. OK. Yeah, a lot of interesting, uh, a lot of interesting charts to uh, to think about here, everyone. Um, let's rotate in, and then uh, there was a poll. If you hadn't have it, haven't had a chance to go into the the poll yet, I'd hope you hope you can do it real quick. Um, what we had asked you was just thinking about um, you know sector performance over the last over the next two months, right, leading into. And again, we're sort of entering that seasonally weaker part of the year. You know, I'm sure you've heard of the sell in May and go away phenomenon hasn't necessarily played out so far, right? The summer was was stronger than than average with pretty good returns in, in US equities. 
But now we start to see the sell-off. The question is, right, is this the beginning of something or is this just a, a pullback? But we're entering that we're entering that part of the calendar when most market corrections have sort of occurred, right? Most market bottoms have, have tended to happen in that September, uh, October range. So we're, we're getting to that point. It might be lining up seasonally with a potentially weaker part. So we asked you what sector would perform best. And we asked you five different sectors, consumer discretionary, technology, healthcare, energy, utilities. And uh, so far, and again, please, please vote if you haven't already, but so far about half of you are saying utilities. What do you, what do you make of that, Mary Ellen? Oh boy. Well, what I make of that is an astute audience that is noticing <laughs> the volatility and uh anticipating more of the same going into the rest of the year. But I, I failed. I think, uh, interestingly, utilities, yes, they are defensive. Oh, we didn't give you the other choices as far as staples and uh, real estate. Uh, real estates are uh, here recently have been quite a bit more vibrant. But yeah, I think that's, uh, that's what they're, they're, they're voting with their uh, jitters and, and very well, <laughs> you know, very well founded. You know, it's it's, it's definitely- fair, and you know, we didn't. I, you know, of course, you can you can you can make it very specific. We didn't really say, you know, if you include the include the total return package, right? If you include the include the dividends of something like utilities or real estate, right? I mean, that for the next two months, that could be really compelling as a defensive as a defensive opportunity, right? Relative to uh, to some others, it's interesting how few said consumer discretionary. Boy, that's a big change from, and and also technology. That's a big change from not too long ago. What I would argue most people would have. Pull of trigger than that. What's most interesting about that poll, I would say, though, is the um, uh, the fact that um, uh, which one was it? Energy got uh, almost no votes. Yeah, and that it, poor energy. Commodities are right, right. Poor energy. I mean, just completely off the uh, yeah. off the table. But I think if you think about it, I mean, that you know, arguably, could be one of the more interesting ideas here. Then, right? If if no one thinks that's something to look at, that usually sets off a, a flag in my head, thinking I want to take that. Take, the contrarian view. Yeah. But, it, you know, and again, if you think about, you know, I think the market is all about themes and narratives and what people buy into what they, you know, what they what they're thinking about and what's what's in their mind as they're as they're putting their portfolio, making changes to it. And if you if something like energy, which has been completely off everyone's radar, if it actually starts to work, energy stocks start to look a little better. Oil starts to rally. And, you know, Boy, that would be talk about a different environment that we haven't seen. I, I think it could catch a lot of people off guard, right? Well, we had that head fake in June, yeah. and uh, those that bought into that uh, got got their hands slapped. <laughs> I'm putting it mildly. So uh, I think there's going to be a lot of trepidation. Well, that, that's the truth. And, and I was going to say, I, I would argue that uh, you know, fear is what motivates a lot of investors, a lot of traders right now, and, and over time, and just coming out of you know a secular period where. You know, people got a lot of negative moves in a lot of different, a lot of different times, and people don't forget that they have a long memory of painful investment returns and and what happens. So I think you're right. I but again, and, and that that shows you if it comes out and, and it's unexpected. And a lot of times that can lead to some interesting uh, interesting movements. Um, just to wrap up here, everyone, let's just uh, just do a quick uh, check back on the markets and see where where things are at. So again, looking at a daily chart of the S and P, and and again, I'd encourage you. You know, some of you I know are a little more short term, some of you more longer term. And regardless of what time frame you're on, boy, I'd always encourage you to start with the long term and and sort of get the right get get, get your head on in terms of what the market's doing, and then start to dig in some of the short term movements. Interesting. Since we've been talking, Mary Ellen, we have single handedly encouraged buyers apparently we have we have driven the market higher but, <laughs> but overall the power market, of, yeah. <laughs> that's the power of market watchers live that we're all witnessing <laughs> we're all witnesses and we're back at the middle of the range 2917 on the uh, on the S&P which is isn't bad looking at the 5 minute chart that's something i like to pay attention to just to give the the context to the last week we can see how we've rallied out of those lows and and yeah in the last last 30 minutes it's really started to come up a little bit uh, which is interesting boy I, I tell you what how we end this week can be really, really telling. If we would recover and sort of finish the week more toward the highs, boy, that, that's going to feel like um, you know, much more accumulation than I would have expected after the sell-off we had, uh, had last week. So we're right at a compelling point here, I think, in terms of... In terms I of have that, that 50 day is my line in the sand. So That's a great one. Yep. Absolutely. Worth paying attention to. Just a quick check on the upcoming schedule, everyone. Uh, going to August 14th, we have Dr. Alexander Elder. Longtime contributor to Stock Charts, Julia, Julius DeKempener, Mr. RRG, will be in on the 15th. 
Then the 21st, 22nd, Daniel Shea, Dan Russo, Jesse Felder. Listen, these are all worth uh, paying attention to. Everyone, thanks so much, as always, for joining us on Market Watchers Live for, uh, for Mary Ellen McGonigal. I'm uh, Dave Keller sitting in for uh, Tom Boley. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. And again, keep looking at charts, keep following the markets. As always, appreciate your, uh, your subscription. 